always been a comic. Actually, spent the first 19 years of my life as a Mormon. You know, those ugly men in boring suits riding 10-speed bikes and they all have American accents. Anyone had them knocking on their door recently? Now, people do find it hard to picture me as a Mormon these days. But use your imagination for a minute and try and picture me singing in the choir, teaching Sunday school, and having plaits down to my waist. <laughs> it's a bit difficult, isn't it? So I've actually brought them along with me. This is my real hair. Right, so tatty. And I'd now like to show you what I used to look like as a Mormon. <laughs> and just think, if a life had turned out just a little bit different, this could have been knocking on your door. I come on stage and there's always a, a small shock. And it's great. I get three minutes of silence to work in where no one heckles me or no one hassles me because they're just shocked. And I look like the worst nightmare, especially, you know, with the missing tooth and how tall I am and, and this rather lovely boyish haircut. And then totally twisted and they like me and they're, they're quite confused. And that's when I get in, I get them laughing, and before they know it, it's over and they've gone, oh dear, I was laughing at a lesbian. Oh, I didn't want to do that when I came tonight, but never mind. <laughs> then I had to tell the scariest person in the world you ever have to tell, and that is your mother. Now, I tried to break it to her gently. I sat her down one day and I said, look, Mum, um, I'm not going to church anymore. And just, by the way, I'm a lesbian as well. Her first reaction when she got her voice back was, no, you're not. I know you better than that. It's just a phase that you're going through. It's just one big joke, really. I mean, looking back on it, I can't believe that two-thirds of my life was spent believing, you know, that God lived on a planet called Kolob, which was, you know, out past Pluto. My one-woman show, my black comedy, uh, dealing with your know, average topics of comedy, Mormonism, lesbianism, alcoholism, suicide and incest, with the Granville train smash thrown in you know, as a bit of a bonus, really. And it was a comedy. It was very hard when I um, first started doing it at the La Mama. They um, put it on sight unseen. And I had to go around the radio stations, do all the interviews with people and, and try and explain the show to people who hadn't seen it. And especially when I mentioned incest, some of the sisters would just look at me with the looks of death. And it was like, so how do you make incest funny? And so, oh, oh I don't. Um, uh, incest is not funny, but some of the things around it, uh, well, they were quite blackly amusing in retrospect many years later when I was, oh, don't worry, just see the show. I got some very strange ideas about menstruation from my Mormon mother. <laughs> she told me that when I had my period, that if I shampooed my hair, no matter what I used, my hair would still be dull, flat and lifeless. <laughs> and that if I breathed on cake mixes, that the cake wouldn't rise. <laughs> And she wouldn't let me use tampons. She said that putting a tampon in was like having sex. <laughs> Which really confused me. In fact, for a number of years, I thought that men's penises were fluffy and white and this big. They might be. What would I know? When I first started out five years ago, um, this gay man came along to my show who did a bit of comedy and he told me afterwards that gave him some very profound advice. He said, you'll never get anywhere doing lesbian material, just drop it, you know, if you want a career. And I was like, oh, oh, oh dear. Because I wasn't even really thinking about a career at that time. I didn't take, start taking it seriously till last year, but I just thought, ah, oh, I'll just push on, see how I go. Maybe I'll get lucky. Without compromising, I'll see how far I can get. And I'm, I was amazed. I got all these work offers and people started flying me around the country. <laughs> got a show together and I'd like to bump into him again and have a little chuckle in his face. I actually get mistaken for a man quite a lot. <laughs> Thanks for laughing. Happens to me about once a week. <laughs> I've scared a lot of women in those toilets over there. And I remember when I first started out, uh, I was performing in this pub once and this woman came up to me during the break 
and went, well, you're not real. <laughs> she thought that I was a female impersonator and not a very good one at that. Now, I'm not saying this applies to all comedians, but there is a, a certain percentage of comedians I've sort of worked with or come up against, uh, come across around the traps. Basically, so you're sort of insomniac, alcoholic, manic, depressives. It's, it's really quite sad. And in a way, I have this secret theory that the kid in the playground that was always by themselves and that everyone la else laughed at and beat up on, you know, they've come back and this time they're on stage and in control. Yes, ah, revenge. Now the last thing I'd like to show you tonight is something a friend picked up for me in a deli in Cleveland Street in Sydney. I think every lesbian household should have it. It's this wonderful powdered lemon drink from Turkey called Lezo! <laughs> is there someone in your family that you think should be a lesbian? Wow, just put two teaspoons of Lezo in their evening drink. And I would love it if the bar would stock it, because I could think of nothing better than being able to walk up to a bar and going, hey, make mine a Lezo.